As of the publishing date of this video today, Fly Me to the Moon, a movie about faking the moon landing is coming out. It's supposed to be a comedy. It's starring uh, Channing Tatum and Scarlett Johansson. We need to shoot back up version of the moon landing. You mean to fake it? We're still talking about this in 2024. The moon landings, whether they were fake or not. Well, I personally just want to tell you guys, believe that they actually happened. Now, here's how neutral I want to be. This video will be showing you that the fact that there are no stars in the moon landing photos is proof of authenticity. But authenticity of a photo if it were taken on the moon. So I'm not saying that they went to the moon and took the pictures. However, if you did go to the moon, this is exactly how the photos would look. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video on why there are no stars in the sky if you take pictures on the surface of the moon. Playing with light and shadow. It's the very foundation of capturing a compelling image. So when the topic of stars in moon landing photos comes up, I start thinking about all the conspiracy theories linked to the star debate. For those unfamiliar with the debate, some claim the absence of stars in most Apollo mission photos is evidence of a hoax. But the truth is far more grounded in a couple of Photography 101 technical explanations. Let's explore the world of exposure and why stars wouldn't appear in photos optimized for the lunar surface and astronauts. Imagine a camera as a room with a window. The lens acts like the window and the lens's aperture ring acts as a curtain. Light from the scene you're capturing enters through the lens and strikes the film. The amount of light that reaches the film determines the image's brightness and detail, just like the curtain that when closed makes for a darker room. Now this is the basics of any camera taking an image. So to do this, the camera uses two important tools, aperture and shutter speed. Now aperture is the adjustable lens opening that acts as the doorway size. The lens uses what we call aperture blades to accomplish this. A wider aperture lets in more light, like opening a curtain fully, while a smaller one restricts it, like a partially closed curtain. Now another super important aspect about aperture is that smaller aperture sizes not only let in less light, but also create greater depth of field. Now to put the concept of depth of field in layman's terms, this just means that it allows for more of the image to be in focus when you take a photo. Remember this little fact, it's gonna be important. Now let's talk about shutter speed. Shutter speed is the duration the shutter stays open, allowing light to flood the film. A faster shutter speed lets in light for a shorter amount of time, like a quick peek, while the slower shutter speed allows for more prolonged exposures, like leaving the curtain open for a while. And this brings about another small but important fact. Fast shutter speeds can freeze time. If your shutter speed is slower, your photos might have what is called motion blur. Motion blur. You don't want that. So a small recap. A fast shutter speed means no motion blur and less light. A small aperture means less light and a higher probability of having an in-focus image. Using these tools and film ISO ASA, which I might explain in another video, the goal is to achieve the balanced exposure where enough light reaches the film to capture the scene without being too bright, overexposed, or too dark, underexposed. Everybody got that so far? So now let's apply this newly acquired knowledge to the moon landing photos. The lunar surface is a harsh environment bathed in the sun's harsh light with no atmosphere to soften the light coming in. 
This translates to very bright scenes for any camera. Everyone can agree that the moon's surface houses brightness that one cannot even imagine. So undoubtedly, astronauts used fast shutter speeds and smaller apertures to capture a clear image of the astronauts on the lunar landscape. This combination controlled light to properly expose film to bright foreground elements. It also gave astronauts a higher chance of having everything in focus. Remember, smaller aperture gives higher depth of field. While doing the research for this video, I found out quite a bit of stuff on the equipment they used. They use a Hasselblad data camera with Rezo plate using the iconic 500C model from Hasselblad. A Zeiss Biogon 60mm f5.6 lens and a Zeiss Planner 80mm f2.8 lens, which was used to shoot from inside the Eagle Lunar Module. But the one they used outside was the 60mm. Now at that time, the film sensitivity you chose was the film sensitivity you were stuck with. So they used the ISO ASA 160, a shutter speed of 1 250th, they're freezing the action and aperture varied between 5.6 and 11. Now a 60 millimeter lens on a medium format camera like the Hasselblad is considered a wide angle, probably about a 39 millimeter equivalent. All of this makes quite a bit of sense because these astronauts had these cameras on their chest and didn't really have the capacity to focus and spend time pointing at the right thing. So by having a wide angle lens, they made sure that everything came into the shot without really pointing minutiously. So given the bright sunlight on the moon, a standard recommendation might have been a relatively high shutter speed of around 1 250th of a second or more and a low aperture around f11 to f16 to achieve good depth of field and prevent overexposed images. If you're going to expose for the surface of the moon, you're going to lose the stars. Compared to the lunar surface, stars are incredibly faint. A much longer shutter speed is necessary to capture their faint twinkle, perhaps tens of seconds or even minutes. You don't have to look any further than the Hubble Space Telescope, which has to sometimes orbit the Earth six to eight hundred times to photograph one patch of sky. And might I remind you, the Hubble Space Telescope has a huge mirror concentrating light and is also in space. So while a slow shutter speed might capture faint stars, the bright lunar surface and astronauts would blast the film. Think about taking a picture of a friend standing in front of a sunset at night. If you expose for your friend's face, the window becomes a giant white blob. The same principle applies to the moon. A long exposure for stars would render pictures of the astronauts and landscape unusable. So here's my conclusion, guys. The lack of stars in most moon landing photos isn't some grand conspiracy. It's a simple consequence of camera settings optimized for capturing the bright lit lunar surface and astronauts. Photography is all about balancing light. And in this case, the priority was a clear picture of the historic moment, not the faint pinpricks of distant stars. So remember the science behind the camera next time you see a moon landing photo without stars. It's a testament to the ingenuity of the astronauts and the technological marvel that allowed them to capture humanity's first steps on another world. Hey you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Do not forget to check out my video on the crosshairs because conspiracy theorists think that the crosshairs go behind objects which would make them phonies or fakes. Again, same sort of conclusion. Those crosshairs are real and they still would have been the way they are, but find out by clicking this video right here. Thank you so much for watching guys. Like, share, subscribe, and don't forget everybody, keep on making something from nothing.